In order to pursue process improvements using robotic process automation, users will require an in-depth knowledge of the current process performance in order to baseline and also the ability to identify suboptimal execution patterns which are going to be the candidates for automation. Now, Timeline PI, the intelligent process mining tool, delivers critical process intelligence which allows users to improve the execution of business processes. Now using patent pending timeline analysis approach, organizations are able to take full advantage of RPA initiatives through new methods of process analysis and with the ability to drill in and uncover the root cause to problems. What we'll take a look at today is a scenario revolving around a credit card onboarding. So customers applying for new credit cards and tracking them through throughout that application process. So I'll point out to a source that's got some events related to these customer applications. The key here is that we have three data points necessary to begin our analysis. The timestamp, which tells us when these events occurred. The timeline ID, which joins together all the events in an application into the same context. And then an event name that tells us what happened with the application at that point in time. Now apart from these three fields, we've got some other fields which are going to be our attributes or dimensions of this customer onboarding process. Who is the processor, the card type, the risk level, and so on. Now you can bring as many or as few of these extra fields as makes sense. Now upon loading our data, which supports our application process, we're immediately shown a number of different metrics around how this process is currently performing, our baseline. Things like what's the average duration of a customer application? How many events are typically occurring? What's the cost overall to process these 3,000 plus customer applications? And what's the average cost per application? So very interesting information right after loading data with no configuration necessary. Now I'll also show you we have details around each and every instance of a customer application. Now each of these horizontal lines represents a separate timeline and these icons are the events or steps that have occurred along the way. Now if I click any one of these, it gives me very detailed and granular data about what happened with this specific applicant in what order and at what time. So we can see when their application was received, when we assigned a processor, verifications and fraud checks were run, so on and so forth. And now I've got all of my attribute related data for this application as well. Until eventually it looks like this card has been sent out to the applicant. So we've got very detailed data. Now we also have the ability to look at what does this process look like from a schema, from a visualized perspective. We we'll use, we'll use our schema module to take a look at that. And this is where we can really start to drive some interesting insights about this process. Now what you see here is a visual diagram of what this process looks like from a dominant path perspective. And you can see how uh, applications progress through the workflow. The thickness of the line here is going to represent where more applications or customers have taken one transition between two different areas of the process versus another. Or we can focus here not on volume of applications, but where is time being spent as a part of this application process? And if we're concerned about time and throughput, we might want to start looking into areas for automation where we're spending the most average time in between any two parts of the process and hone in on this part. Now I'll also show you the ability to animate this. When I turn this on, each circle represents an application or a group of applications and we actually start to visualize as these customers progress through the application workflow, where things start to slow down. As they're backing up and bunching up in certain areas, they're actually bottlenecking. Again, we're pointing out areas where inefficiencies may lie. And as they're changing colors, they're aging. So the idea here is to be able to zoom out a bit, start to understand what our process looks like and where inefficiencies or candidates for automation may exist, which allow us to drill further. Now that we've uncovered what our process looks like and some possible inefficiency areas to go off and investigate, what I want to do is now introduce the amount of variability 
that's occurred within this application workflow using the path analysis module. What this is is a frequency distribution of all of the different execution paths for our customers in our application onboarding workflow with the most commonly followed series of steps here to the left. So along the top we've got the number of applicants that have been processed with one sequence versus another relative to the events listed here along the left. So the idea here is to be able to very quickly pick out where we're skipping steps, where we may be going back to complete steps, where we may be doing steps multiple times in certain instances and pinballing back and forth, very clearly pointing out where these inefficiencies may lie. Now not only from a compliance or a, an overall process step efficiency perspective, you can look at this also from an average duration. So how long is it taking us to practice to follow these onboarding sequences when we execute on one sequence versus another? And as soon as we find something that stands out as a relatively long execution pattern, we might want to focus in on that. Now I'll also show you a different way to visualize this using more to that schema model, things like branching and loopbacks. So a different way of visualizing that same part of analysis. We can also now incorporate the cost. So how costly is it to us as, as a credit card processor when we process applications one way versus another? And now if we're concerned about cutting cost or leakage out of our process, we know exactly where we're going to want to start to focus. It's these more high cost execution patterns and we can drill in on those by selecting them, applying them as a filter, and now when I come back and look at my timelines, I'm focused in on just those applications which have exhibited that high cost behavior. So another way of starting to uncover areas where we're going to get the most bang for our buck from possible automation. The last thing to show you in this scenario is the ability, at, um, again, automatically to start to understand where bottlenecks are occurring apart as a part of this process. So what you're looking at here is the time between certain events that are taking place as a part of this workflow. We can see here's the two events that we're talking about. So the delta of time in between these two, the number of transitions that, th that have occurred, how often is that happening per application, what's the average time that it takes us to go, in this case from processor assigned to verifications, 28 hours, the total time that's been spent as a part of this data set, and then what's the percentage of to overall total time spent processing on this specific scenario. Now in this case this is actually an interesting one because what it's saying is it's taking us over a day just to run a verification step on a customer who's coming into this workflow. Now that could be an inherent candidate for automation and by using this type of analysis shows me I can save quite a bit of time in, in taking a look at possibly automating that verification step. Now again, all of this has been done with no configuration necessary. You simply upload the data that supports your business process and start to drill in to find where inefficiencies lie. This way you can not only baseline, but take these insights away to now apply them to your automation best practices.